other ways to get together. Um, speaking of getting together, following the education hour today, we are having a potluck, so if you didn't bring anything, come. Um, if you just brought leftovers, come. It should be a good time. It should be a, a wonderful time just to fellowship after the, the service today and walk in. We saw food already in there for the party, so uh, what a great thing that is. Uh, upcoming activities, we have a lock-in for the, the confirmation senior high youth uh, in a couple weeks. The all confirmation kids should have received stuff and taken it home for their parents to sign. Um, also, if you walked in, you notice that there's kids selling tickets for this year's chili cook-off. So if you are so moved, um, the youth would like to invite you to come and be a part of the chili cook-off um, in two different ways. One, you can come, they're selling $10 tickets, and when you come for the chili cook-off, those get turned back in, and you can receive 10 voting tickets to be able to vote for your favorite chili. So if you would like to come and eat chili, we, we also decided that since there are some Sunday school kids who might not like chili, we're gonna get pizza from next door and we'll sell that for a dollar a slice since it is a youth fundraiser. The youth are getting ready for, um, we're taking a number of youth to New Orleans this summer to help them get trained to be leaders in the youth group and in preparation for next summer's national youth gathering. And for each student, it's gonna be somewhere between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars to go to have the, the time with the National Youth Gathering. So fundraising is something we're gonna be doing a lot of in the next year. So um, this is a fundraiser, so if you are so moved and wanna be a part of the chili cook-off by making chili, we are asking for a five dollar donation for the chili, and uh, all of those funds go to the youth to help um, get ready for the Still in the mindset of food and worship, starting this Wednesday is Lent. So we start Wednesday with Ash Wednesday. There will be a, a, a noon service and a 6 o'clock service, the noon service followed by lunch, and the 6 o'clock service preceded by dinner. And so uh, come and be a part of either of those meals, but more importantly, come and be a part of the worship service as we begin our Lenten journey from uh, Ash Wednesday to crucifixion to resurrection. So um, that should be uh, a good time for us as God's people to reflect on our own sinful condition and to be reminded that as sinners we do have a Savior, that Jesus Christ did come to suffer and die and rise again to be our Savior. So with that all being said, that's who we're here to worship this morning. So we begin our time of worship together as we sing our opening hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light.
please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. We read together the Ten Commandments. You shall have no other gods. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or maidservant his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Exalt the Lord our God, and worship at his holy mountain. For the Lord our God is holy. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted over all the peoples. The king in his mighty loves justice. You have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain. For our Lord our God is holy.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, in the glorious transfiguration of your beloved Son, you confirmed the mysteries of the faith by the testimony of Moses and Elijah. In the voice that came from the bright cloud, you wonderfully foreshadowed our adoption by grace. Mercifully make us co-heirs with the King in his glory and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. Our Old Testament reading comes from 2 Kings, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. And Elijah said to Elisha, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. And the sons of the prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he said, Yes, I know it. Keep quiet. Elijah said to him, Elisha, please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets who were in Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take away your master from over you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Keep quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Please stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his cloak and rolled it up and struck the water, and the water was parted to one side and to the other, till the two of them could go over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what I shall do for you before I am taken from you. And Elisha said, Please, let there be a double portion of your spirit on me. And he said, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am being taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if you do not see me, it shall not be so. And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it, and he cried, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. And he saw him no more. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12 through 18, and chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Since we have such a hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the old covenant, that the same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all, with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, 
but by the open statement of the truth, we would command, commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled only to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand out of respect to the reading of the Holy Gospel as we sing together the Alleluia and verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became radiant, intensely white, as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Moses with Elijah. And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, for they were terrified. And a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. And suddenly, looking around, they no, no longer saw anyone with them but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, he charged them to tell no one what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, o Christ. Please be seated as we sing the children's hymn before we have a children's message. I'd like to invite the children to come up for a children's message.
Good morning. How are you guys? Good? Good? I'm doing good today, too. Thanks for... Oh, you didn't ask. Oh, that's okay. Maybe next time. So were you listening to the gospel reading? And it talked about Jesus being on top of a mountain. And then two people appeared, Moses and Elijah, who had been gone for lots and lots and lots of years gone like in heaven gone and they appeared and they're talking with Jesus and some of his disciples were there but then this big cloud comes and covers up all of them and, and while the cloud is down on them there is this great big voice of God saying this is my beloved son with him I am well pleased listen to him so I have a question for you. How good are you guys at listening? On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being a perfect listener and 1 being a not perfect listener. How many of you are a 10? 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, Excellent. One. Anyone? I love honesty. Honest. Well, she was like at six. I mean, like, whatever. So I figured, I was trying to think, okay, so if we're supposed to listen to Jesus, I was trying to think of a good way to explain this. So, see if this is working. Let's say that, what is this? Chocolate syrup, okay, now the questions will get harder, I promise. It, this is, no, this is just chocolate syrup, right? So we're going to pretend that this is Jesus. We're just going to pretend it's not like he really is chocolate syrup, because that would be weird. And we're going to take Jesus, and let's say how... How much time do you think we spend with Jesus? Do we spend a whole jar worth? Well, we, we'd like to say yes, right? But you guys said you weren't all really good listeners, so that means eh, we probably listen less to Jesus. So we're going to say, oh, what do you think? We go to church, right? We got some church in there. And then I might go to Sunday school. Yeah, there's church and Sunday school, and maybe we say prayers before we go to bed at night. Yeah, so we got some more that, and then we got uh, maybe we pray before we have meals. Yeah, yeah, we got some of that, and then um, am I missing any other times that we're doing Jesus stuff? Is that is that pretty good? Did we get it all? Any of you do devotions? No. Okay. Good. Uh, are you in confirmation? Not yet. Soon, right? So, that's how much Jesus you get for a whole week. How's the rest of your week looking? Empty? All right, so let's do this. Let's say this is all the other things that we do during the week. How many of you sleep during the week? Every night, I think, you sleep? Yeah, so we'll we got to have some sleep in there, right? And how many of you go to school or daycare or something? Everybody go to some type of school or do stuff? Yeah. Okay. And how many of you, let's say, um, watch things on the computer or on TV or on the Internet or you know, a bunch of time doing that too, huh? All right. And uh, eh, that's all the other stuff you do during the week. So there you go. That's perfect. So we got Jesus on the bottom and the rest of it. How much Jesus is in the rest of the week? Not much. I mean, we got some of it down at the bottom. What do we got to do? Shake it up or stir it up. Because we want Jesus to be all about our week, right? When we're at school, we want to act like we follow Jesus. When we're in bed, we want to think good things or dream good things. When we're spending time with mom and dad or 
our friends, or even the other stuff that we put inside our head, um, some of the things we watch or listen to, the music we listen to, we want Jesus to be a part of all of those things, right? Huh. It's turning into chocolate milk, but you know what? You know what we need? We need more Jesus. I mean, if we really, if we really want to have a lot of good time and hanging out with Jesus, the more time we spend with Jesus, the more he becomes a part of all of the things we do. The way we act towards our sisters and our brothers or our parents, the more time we spend with Jesus, the more time he spends with us and he changes us from being regular into something special? Chocolate milk. Chocolate milk, exactly. Jesus makes us all, no, he doesn't make our lives all chocolate milk. No, but does Jesus want to be a part of all of our life? Yeah, yeah. Not just at church, not just at Sunday school, not just when we're saying our prayers. He wants to be a part of all of our things, like our dancing or our sports or our homework or what we're watching on TV or anything. We, Jesus wants to be a part of all of our lives. So let's pray. Dear Jesus, repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Help me to let you be a part of all of my life. I love you, Jesus. Amen. And you can go back to your seats, and we will continue by singing our next hymn, Tis Good Lord to Drink Chocolate Milk. No, Tis Good Lord to Be Here. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Chocolate milk. Mm. How many of you like chocolate milk? Raise your hand. 
How many of you, if you're not raising your hand, because whatever reason, I'm sorry for you. I love chocolate milk. I love chocolate milk. And the doctor says, don't drink chocolate milk. <sighs> got to listen to the doctor, right? Because the doctor's got my best interest in heart, right? The doctor's wanting to take care of me. Listening to the doctor, I should do. Listening to my wife, I should do. Right? Happy wife, happy life. See, you've heard that before, and some of you have lived that, right? I listen to my children. I mean, not like they tell me, Dad, you should do this, but I listen to my kids when they're, when they're sick, when they're hurting, when they're in need. Listening is what we have been called to do, to listen to our friends, to listen to our neighbors, to listen to all kinds of things. In our gospel reading for today, there on the Mount of Transfiguration, the voice from heaven comes down and says, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Listen to him. Listen to him. Let listening sink in. What, is, what does it mean to listen to him? Is it just about the audible sound, listening to him? When Jesus called his first disciples, Peter and Andrew and James and John, they were on their boats they were taking care of their nets, and Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And what did they do? They put down their nets, they left their boats, they left their stuff, and they followed him. They, they listened. Sometime in, in our current uh, understanding of the word follow, it's a little bit different than uh, what, what the disciples understood follow to mean. For us, if you are on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, any of those things, often you will hear this conversation between individuals. Can I follow you? And what does that mean? Can I have your information so that I can occasionally look at whatever it is that you're posting on one of these sites? Can I follow you? Is that the same thing as what Peter and James and Andrew and John did with Jesus, just checked in occasionally to see how you're doing there, Jesus? No, it was different. I know some of you are excited for today. There is some event going on this evening, including two teams. Some people are excited. They're having parties and if you've been watching any of the sports channels for the last two weeks you've been following the event to come for this evening so does that mean following tonight's football game learning about each players also finding out which of the players are professing Christians and which ones aren't Depending on which radio station you listen to, they'll tell you who say they're Christians and who's not. So I followed. I followed for tonight's game. Is that the same thing? No. What does it mean to Peter and Andrew, James and John, to follow Jesus was to listen to him. To listen to him with their whole lives, to follow physically, to be with him, to be a part of his ministry. Doesn't mean they were always perfect and good and did it right all the time? Definitely not. In fact, scriptures has a whole lot of times when they, they weren't really following. They weren't really, really listening. Is this microphone kicking in and out the whole time? All right, let's try 
Testing, testing, one, two, three. All right, there you go. How about that? We'll just use that one. We're yelling at each other, I think, is what's going on. Ah. You're trying to listen to me, and it's hard. What a perfect day for things to go wrong, right? Talking about listening, and it's hard because things get in the way, right? Things get in the way when we're trying to listen to the Lord. You know, like you're listening to the radio, and you're spending your time listening to music on one of the good country stations in town, right? You're listening to that music and what types of things are being promoted in those songs? Are they church always appropriate things that they're being promoted? No. But we're listening and that's getting poured into our head and into our mix. Or maybe we're listening to one of the rock stations or the oldies stations. Have ever really listened to the words on the oldies stations? They're just as bad as some of the words of some of the new songs about not being so church appropriate. Well, we're pouring that in. And maybe we're, we're watching Netflix movies, and not all Netflix movies are bad. Not all Netflix movies are good. Well, we're pouring that in. Pouring it in. How many other things do we listen to during the week? How many other things do we allow, give access to our head? How many? Over and over, day after day, thing after thing. If it's our family, if it's our work, if it's the guy driving in front of you or somebody who's not driving in front of you and they're not happy because of what you did and they're yelling at you, you know, because, well, they're waving at you. And you start getting a little hot under the collar and you start thinking, I can't believe that you're that mad at me. I didn't really do it. It wasn't that bad. And now all of that stuff is going in and all of that stuff's going in and we're allowing so many different voices in our Head. How many of us read books that are not completely church appropriate? Don't raise your hand. How many of us watch, because then I would know who people who are readers are, and I don't like that. Not that I would judge you. Well, judging, there's another one of those things that's going to happen. Oh, my goodness. All of this stuff going in, all of this stuff going in, all of this stuff going in, and we're not always adding Jesus to the mix. We're not always listening to Jesus. Yes, because we are sinners. We need more Jesus. We, we need more Jesus to go against all of those things that this world is telling us matter most. All of the things that this world is saying are the most important things, and you can get to your church stuff later. You can get to your time with Jesus later. Don't worry. You can stay up real late Friday night so that Saturday morning, instead of getting up to spend time with the Lord, you can sleep till noon and then get on with the rest of your day so you didn't have the opportunity to spend any time with the Lord so less Jesus time happens because I was listening to those who said, let's go out, it's okay. How good are we at listening to the Lord? Could you imagine what it must have been like there for Peter and James and Andrew and John as they are standing there on the mountain in the presence of not only Jesus, the Son of God, but also Moses and Elijah, two guys that they have heard about from the time they were little kids, guys who had been dead and gone for years and years and years. And there they are in their presence. And what does Peter do? Peter starts talking. We got to do something, got to do something, got to do something. And the, the father says, all right, hush. Cloud comes down. This is my beloved son. Stop your talking. This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. 
let him be the thing you hear. When Adam and Eve first sinned, when the Lord spoke to them, what did they really get in trouble for? Listening to somebody else instead of listening to God first. Right? When the Lord spoke to Eve, she said, well, it was the serpent. It's his fault. He was talking to me, and I, and I listened to him. And then when the Lord spoke to Adam, he said, well, it's her fault because she listened to the snake, so I listened to her. And what did they both get in trouble for? Listening to somebody before or over listening to God. What is our biggest problem? Same thing. Listening to voices of others before we listen to the voice of God. Listening to the voices of other things, other people, saying, it's okay, this world is, is mostly fine, it's, everybody means well, so we might as well just take everybody's meaning well and say, well, that meant well. Missing out on the fact that I spent time watching that and saying, well, the storyline ended well, but I had to watch a whole lot of junk to get to the end of the story. Yeah. So hopefully you're feeling as convicted as I am right now because I spend a lot of my day listening to lots of other voices before listening to God. Oh, we might start the day with devotions, but it doesn't take long before the busyness of life gets in the way of the stuff that we read that morning. And now I forgot. I'm doing what the world wants me to do. I'm doing those other things. I'm doing them without allowing God to be with me, to be in me, because I'm too busy. Listen to me. Listen to him, the Lord says. Let, let him be every part of your life. And when you're feeling like you're watered down, add more time. Add more Jesus to your mix. Add more time. See, now this whole sermon sounds like it's all law-driven, right? You got to do this. You got to do this. Add more Jesus to your life and life will be 100% better. Just add more Jesus, right? True, but why? Why do we want to add more Jesus? I mean, wasn't the white milk good enough? Why do we need to add more Jesus? Is it because we have to add him? No, it's because he wants to be a part of our lives. He wants us to listen. Why? Because he's got blessings to give to us. Spend some time in the Old Testament and you, you read over and over again the accounts of people who said, we're going to follow God with all of our heart and all of our soul and all of our lives, and then they turn their back on God. And what happens? Life goes downhill quickly. And again, God the Father comes and says, follow me. I've got you. And he picks up the pieces. He is the one who is there for us, all of us. Not because we deserve it, not because I did enough Jesus time to make my chocolate milk chocolatier. Jesus wants to be a part of our lives. He loves us so much that he came and suffered and died for us, for you, for me. He came and suffered and died and rose again so that we could have forgiveness for the times that we don't spend time with him. He came and he died and rose again so that we could have the gift of him 
forever. The gift of him in our lives, he, he indwells in us, he lives in us, his spirit lives in us, and he wants us to simply say, yeah, thank you. And you know, the more I spend time in his word and the more I spend time in prayer, a crazy thing happens. Well, a couple crazy things happens. One, I want to do it more. The more I spend in it, the more I go, there's a lot of stuff in here, lots of ways that God reveals himself to me and his love. The more I spend time in his word and spend time with him, the more I want to do that because he loves me. And the more I spend time in his word, the more I start looking at people differently. Not as if they are something that I've got to conquer. Not as if they are something I've got to make sure I understand and treat them well. I just start looking at people going, you're just like me. You're a sinner just like me. You need Jesus just like me. And it doesn't matter if they're having a bad day or if I'm having a bad day. God loves each of us the same. God desires for all of us to have him with us. So it's encouraged. Listen to him. Let him be a part of all of your life. And let your life be changed because of what he has done for you. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have sent your Son to be our Savior. We pray, Lord, that you would bring us your comfort and your peace. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess our Christian faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Please be seated. At this time, we'll collect our offerings.
I invite you to stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy Father, with the appearance of Moses and Elijah at our Lord's glorious transfiguration, you revealed to us that the law and the prophets are fulfilled in him. Send your blessing upon all pastors and servants of your church that their preaching and teaching would flow from this right understanding of Christ and his work for our eternal salvation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would be with all those who are struggling with health concerns. We pray that you would be with George, Helen, Brenda, Bill, Janet, Steve, Derek, and Pastor Dean. Lord, you know their needs. We pray that you would bring them your healing and that you would bring comfort and strength to their families as well. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would be with Barb, Scott, Josh, Ed, Jesslyn, and Steve as they celebrate their birthdays this week. Lord, remind us that every day is a gift from you. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would be with President Biden and Governor Walz and all the elected officials of our nation. We pray, Lord, that you would keep them safe and use them for the purpose you have placed them into office. We also pray, Lord, that you would be with our military men and women around the world. We pray for their safety. We pray for your, their families as well. We pray for the protection and safety of our police officers, firefighters, EMSs, and all others who put themselves in harm's way for the benefits of others. Lord, bless them and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would be with all who are struggling with depression or anxiety. Lord, that they would know that they do have a purpose and you have a plan for them. We pray, Lord, that you would bless them and surround them with individuals who would bring your light into their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for all who are struggling with addictions. We pray, Lord, that you would help them to be relieved from this this terrible thing. Lord, that you would, would move in their heart and their mind, that they would find more time to be with you and less time to be with the voice of the thing they are addicted to, telling them one more time isn't going to hurt, one more time isn't bad. Lord, help them to find their release from this addiction in you. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Lord, that you would be with all families who are dealing with with cancer. Lord, there's so many of our families and friends who are struggling with this terrible disease. Lord, we pray that you would bring strength and healing and peace to these individuals and families. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all the families who are mourning. Lord, uh, every day people are leaving this life. And Lord, we just pray that you would be with the families of those who mourn, especially for for Sean Blakemore at the passing of his father this morning. Lord, that you would bring comfort to this family as well. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember on this day the glorious manifestation of your son's divinity on the Mount of Transfiguration. Teach us to listen to Jesus and ever fix our eyes on him and his innocent suffering and death for our forgiveness. By your grace and mercy, strengthen us to remain faithful in all circumstances of trial, temptation, and persecution. Preserve us to the end that we may die a blessed death believing in your beloved Son with whom you are well pleased. For the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn, Beautiful Savior. Oh. 